Hey guys, thank you for joining today. And we'll actually be looking at some calculations based on our topic yesterday, which was momentum. All right, so we have three questions here that we're going to actually look at to see if we understand fully what momentum is. All right, so let's go. So question one, all right? So we have two masses. The first mass was at rest. The second mass moving to the right at 16 meters per second. Then it caused the first mass to move at an angle to 37 degrees and the second mass moved actually vertically downwards at uh, unknown velocity v and the question asks us to find what that v is right so because we now moving in both planes in this question we have to use our x and our y plane all right now because the question only asks to find the velocity of the first ball which the first ball actually tells us it's going vertically down right so because of that we only will be able to or easily use just the y plane right because the v for the first ball after collision only acts in your y plane because it's vertically downward right so we only going to focus in on our y plane right so let's go so we know that the momentum before equals the momentum after, right? So in our y plane, m1 has no y because it's moving horizontally at 16. So therefore, m1 would be zero, right? And m2 was actually at rest. So it's also will have a zero velocity in your y plane. So before momentum is zero equals m1. Now it's going down. In a velocity vertical it's going down so that's the reason why we have a negative v there and the v is unknown plus m2 now it's moving right and its velocity in your y plane right would be opposite so it's v2 sine theta right so we substitute our values so m1 is 1 so it's 1 time negative v which is just negative v plus m2 is 4 times our velocity 5 times sine 37 degrees angle, right? So we multiply 4 times 5 times sine 37, we get 12.04, right? And it's a plus. So we take that 12.04 to the negative, to the opposite side becomes a negative, right? So both negative V and negative 12.04 is present. So we divide by negative 1 and we get V to be 12.04 meters per second, right? So the diagram already showed that the 12.04 velocity is going down, right? So our velocity is just 12.04 meters per second for this question. So we notice we did not use the x plane because there, there is no x component for this velocity, right? So we don't need the x plane. All right, let's go to question two. All right, so in this case, we have a falcon, right? That is actually moving down at 45 degrees to actually catch another bird right the pigeon right so they both now once the falcon catch the pigeon they both move together all right now at a different angle with a different velocity so the question here is a two part we're going to find the velocity as well as the angle that they moved off together and because they moved off together, then that shows us that it's an inelastic collision, right? So let's go. So we know momentum before equals momentum after. Always start with that statement, right? So we start with our Y plane. Now, the purpose why we are going to use both planes is because F, the V of F for both the Falcon and the Pigeon after collision showed us that it actually has an X component and a Y component, right? All right, so we have 0 0.80 times negative 18. So the negative comes from, it's going, the y is actually going down, right? So the y plane of your falcon is going down. So negative 18 times sine 45 degrees angle plus 0 0.36 mass of the pigeon times zero, right? Because there is no y velocity for the pigeon. It's only moving horizontally at 9, right? Equal, 
add in both masses because it's an inelastic collision. So we add both masses times Vf in our y plane, so it's sine theta, right? So we get negative 10.18 equals 1.16 Vf sine theta. We divide by 1.16 on both sides. So we get Vf sine theta to be negative 8.78, right? So that's it for the y plane. So let's look at the, the x plane, right? So in the x plane, the only thing that changes now is the sign becomes cost, cost, right? But the 18 is a positive 18 because it's going to the right. So the x component of the falcon is going to the right. So it's a positive number. So we still get cost and sign 45 is the same answer. So we get the 10.18 again, right? And this time the pigeon has uh, momentum in the x plane right because it's moving horizontally so it's uh, 0 0.36 mass times 9 so we get 3.24 we add both we get 13.42 right and on the right hand side remains the same right because the masses are added together 1.16 v vf cos theta we divide by 1.16 on both sides right and we get 11.57 equals vf cos theta theta right so now is where a little math is a plan right so to move from here right we know that sine over cos is actually tan theta right so we can divide our y plane by our x plane right so if we divide y by the x plane right then we get the 8.78 divided by 11.57 to get 0 0.759 negative because the 8.78 is negative right and vf over vf we cancel out so we leave back with sine theta over cos theta which is equal to tan theta right so tan inverse to find theta tan inverse of negative 0 0.759 is negative 37.20 degrees now the negative there means that it's a actually in a plane that the value is negative right so remember that if we learn from math we have four quadrants right so it's actually moving in our fourth quadrant that's the reason why the theta there is negative right but to just write your final answer you ignore the negative and just put 37.20 degrees right now we have the angle let's move to finding the value of the vf so, because we have both an X and a Y plane for the VF value, we have to use both X and Y plane equations to find the full VF value, right? So, we use first the Y plane equation, which is 8.78 equals VF sine 37.20, right? Because that's the angle, right? Then we get VF in our y plane to be 14.51 meters per second right we do the same for the x plane it's 11.57 equals vf cos 37.20 we get vf to be 13.18 meters per second so now we have the vf for your x plane and your y plane right so now we can use pythagoras theorem to find the vf value because those values were just for each single plane Right? So the total VF value would be the square root of 14.51 squared plus 13.18 squared, which we get the total VF for the answer to be 19.60 meters per second. Right? So this is the final velocity for the both Falcon and the Pigeon. Right? So now let's look at our final question here. Right? So we have a diagram that shows our directions right and our masses so mass a is five kilograms moving initially at five meters per second at 15 degrees above the horizontal collides with mb moving with a velocity of 1.3 meters per second after the collision ma is deflected 35 to the horizontal with a velocity of two meters per second and mb moves 12 below the horizontal at 12, two meters per second calculate the mass of mb 
right? So we note here that the momentum before equals momentum after again. And based on the question and the diagram, we notice that it is our elastic collision, right? So in this case, we're finding the mass. So once you're finding the mass, right, and everything else is given, then we just need one plane. And we're going to use the y plane this time, right? So it's MAVA sine theta, right? And that MA is going up in our y plane, so it's a positive V, plus MB is at rest, so it is times zero. Equals after MA, now it's VA sine theta. It's still going up, right? So it's a still positive number, plus MP times VP, VB, sorry, right? And the VB there is going down in our Y, right? So that's why it's negative sine theta, right? So we substitute our value, so it's 5 times 3 times sine 15 gives us 3.88 equals 5 times 2 times sine 35 is 5.74 minus, all right, the 2 times sine 12, we get 0.42 MB, all right? So we take over the 5.74, so it becomes a negative. So 3.88 minus 5.74, we get negative 1.86, right? And now we can divide both sides by 0 0.42, negative 0 0.42. So we get a positive 4.43 kilograms, right? So once you're finding the mass, you can use, and you have all other variables, we can use any plane to find the mass because the mass is not a vector quantity, so it's not affected by the plane that is in, right? So thank you very much, guys, for watching today. Hope you understand something about vector and see you guys next time.